Well, welcome. Everybody. Oops. <laughs> All right. Ooh, yes, we are. Welcome, everyone. I, I, we have Shane Cramey, who's going to be speaking tonight, and I'm really looking forward to this. And um, it's Pastor Tim will not be here this evening because he's been told by Sister Betty since he's had surgery. You are staying home and you are resting. And, and I guess he said, yes, ma'am. So he needed to rest <laughs> tonight. So anyway, so let's go ahead and open up with prayer. Father, thank you for this day. We, we are grateful, Lord, that uh, every day you make is a good day. Lord, we are asking, uh, we're just asking for your blessing tonight. I ask, Father, that you would anoint Shane with that, uh, with fresh oil and lord that there would just be such a flow in what he speaks and lord we ask that the word that you have for us tonight that would go deep down inside of us and it would produce fruit i also pray father that um as we worship that it would just so honor you lord we just want to honor you with this entire evening and so we're giving this all to you and we're opening up our ears to hear what the Spirit has to say. We're opening up our eyes to see what you need us to see. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Whoa. As Pam said, yes, my name is Shane Cramey. And uh, I'm just thankful for everybody here tonight. And my mom and sister are able to join us. So thanks for coming. And being a part of it so uh, yeah um and thank you pam for this opportunity to come and speak and do this and kind of started with damon who's in the back there who had mentioned it to pam that have an opportunity to uh speak so i'll just say thanks for to damon earlier this year uh damon invited me to go to a men's encounter in Springfield and we were we were there and there were several great pastors that were speaking there at this encounter and and there was a baseball player uh, I don't remember his name he played for the New York Yankees and I really wasn't too interested in the baseball player Mariano Rivera was his name pitcher for the Yankees and he uh just pull up some stats quick. He had 1,173 strikeouts. He's uh, 652 saves. He was a closing pitcher for the Yankees. But the biggest story he shared was about Jesus, how he uh, came to know and have a relationship with the Lord, and everywhere that he went, uh, he would share Christ with all the owners of the Yankees. With uh, He was even um, President Trump had given him an honorary medal, and you know, he brought it up there, and so out of all, it was a great men's encounter, and but somebody I really wasn't even interested in kind of hearing from or seeing brought a word that I got to hear. He was the most, so if you take that platform, top closing pitcher, they won World Series, I think, three or four years in a row, so he's got the right to kind of, well, not the right, but he could be one arrogant guy if he really wanted to. And uh, he was the most humble guy that you would ever hear speak. So uh, that was that was a pretty neat deal. And at that men's encounter, they had said that your year is, we went in, uh, well, I think it was May or April. They had said that uh, this event, this this can change change you, change your, change your uh, life. And I was like, how can one little deal, something like this, change your life? Well, it's how you, the, the faith you have to pursue into that. It's having the faith to hear that word and to lead on and take, okay, yeah, this, this can because of what the Lord's doing and leading. So I just wanted to say thanks again for Damon and for what he, what he, what he does here at the church. And his, his, uh, he has an outpouring of, of love and it shows. And he's quite a, quite a brother to have. It's great to be in the fellowship here with brothers and sisters in Christ and 
I mean, as well, Pam, like I said, had asked me to speak last last Tuesday, and as you sit and, and seek the Lord, I didn't know what to speak about at all, but I just was reminded of uh, Matthew 6, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So I went to bed, uh, went to bed Tuesday night, and Wednesday morning, I was starving. I was, I was really, really hungry. And it's kind of funny how the Lord will, will speak to you when you're starting to seek him. So that was what the, that's what the deal was, was hunger. And so he started leading me on this whole journey of hunger and what that means. And the first verse that I came to for hunger was, uh, it's part of the Beatitudes in, in Matthew. And it's Matthew 5, 6. And it says, uh, I'll just, one sec. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And this, uh, like I said, this was Jesus. He had, this is a part of the Sermon on the Mount. And, and uh, Jesus out of these uh, blesseds, there's 11 of the, of the blesseds. Uh, uh, Jesus doesn't promise laughter, pleasure, or earthly property. Blessed means the experience of hope and joy independent of outward circumstances. And so following Jesus, no matter the cost, that's what, that's what blessed means to to the Lord is is following Him no matter the cost. It's not what uh, you know, all these these blesseds are <laughs> completely different from what the world would think would be consider you happy. Happy is not uh, it's it's joy un- unthinkable. It's uh, it's it's completely it's a different deal. In in this verse, uh, righteousness in the Greek. Yeah, I don't know why I can't. Is a dick dyke? It's a word in Greek. It 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 means to be it means to be right with God, and so that's what I'm hungering after and thirsting after is to be right with God and then do the right thing that God wants me to do, no matter what uh, somebody's opinion may be. I sh- what I should do. I need to follow after what God wants me to do. Not, not what after uh, somebody else may want me to do. Uh, so when we are hungry and thirsty to be right with God, we are blessed with a filling. This is not just a one and done kind of thing. We have to continue to hunger and thirst after God. No matter where you think you are, no matter where we're going in life, we just have to continue to want to know more of him. There's always more. There's always a deeper walk with him. He calls us to the to the deep, so we have to yeah, follow after that and, and fall in love with him more and more and, and learn what that means to, to seek first the kingdom of God. We're always learning what it means to seek first the kingdom of God. And we want to be uh, uh, righteous, right with him, and want the things that he wants. In Judaism, righteousness meant to equate, vindicate, restore to right relationship. So we want to have a right relationship with the Lord, and we also want to have a right relationship with one another. We want to seek to have a relationship with one another. We learn that through being obedient to the Lord and by uh, letting him work through you not just looking at out, outward appearance of somebody else, but getting to sit down and, and have a lunch, coffee, whatever it may be, and just having a conversation with one another and getting into a right relationship so that you can call upon that person. Everybody has gifts. The Lord has gifted every single one of us. And so we get to know and have a relationship with one another so uh, we can call upon that person whenever we're down or whenever we see somebody else and we're like hey that there's a testimony there 
I heard uh, my buddy, he's, he's gone through what you've gone through. How would I get you in contact with him? And then it just leads to another and another, and then glory to God comes because nobody else can do it but what he does. He works through us. So the righteous are those who maintain right relationship with God and with people around them. Our eyes cannot be fixed upon ourselves, but must be seeking the Lord. Our relationship with the Lord should cause others to hunger for him as well. So as we are, uh, as you're going out and doing the things of the Lord, people are going to see you doing those, and it's going to cause a hunger inside of them to want what you have. You have Holy Spirit living inside of you, and others long for that. They'll go to many lengths to seek out what you have. They'll, I mean, they'll hit, they'll, uh, money, uh, or uh, job, uh, alcohol, that's just a quick temporary deal, but something with the Lord, that's, that's, that's permanent. And, uh, how, how many of you have been in your house and all of a sudden you smell an amazing scent and your mouth starts watering your neighbor's cooking. <laughs> They're cooking something. They have a barbecue going on. And uh, that's how it should be with us, with the, with the Lord, is others should be like watering at the mouth. Like, what, what, what is that? What do you have? What is really going on? They, I mean, and then invite them over to the barbecue. Invite them in. Let them know about who the Lord is. Let them know what he's been doing in your life. And and uh, so as I kept as I kept going and and going over this uh, hunger portion, the Lord is natural led me to the physical hunger. And hunger can be triggered by sight and smell of food, which I kind of went over and covered with the seeing, and smelling. But also, there's uh, when you're sick. The body produces chemicals called, yeah, cyto, cytokrinus, which plays a part in decreased appetite. Uh, digesting, digesting food takes a lot of energy, so when we aren't digesting food, it frees up energy to help fight an infection or illness. While this may help in short term loss of appetite, throughout a longer lasting illness can be de detrimental. And so we're around, we are around many people who are spiritually sick and what they need is food that nourishes that you have living inside of you. They've been too long without food. So what we're around, and what you can see all over, is a bunch, there's sick. People are individually sick because they're without the Spirit of God living inside of them. And so they're satisfied. There's a hunger. They're, they, uh, they lost their appetite, and they, they, uh, they're resting. They're sleeping. And so their bodies they are gaining energy by rest, but they're just, there's nothing to fully fight off that sickness that's inside of them and so we just need to recognize when somebody is, is spiritually sick to come alongside of them and lay just sit by them lay a hand on them become uh, Jesus in the flesh to them and last uh, last Sunday Pastor Rob had shared how he just uh, touched the deal on his dad's back and it was healed well, before he had said that, in the hallway, Claudia had mentioned, because uh, the kids were with me, and, and she had said how she had been laid out in the spirit and that the kids had laid hands on her and how it just totally touched her and how she just put her in the hall and she just starts crying about it because the kids had done something. So we have no idea exactly what a touch can do to somebody. I mean, just... Because it, it's not, we don't want to do all this stuff and all this, but as Pastor Rob said, he just touched his dad's back and he was healed. 
because of what's inside of you, because of what uh, the Lord wants to work through you. He wants to do miracles. He just, he just wants to show off. He wants to show up and show off inside of you. We get blown away. They get blown away. And it's all, wait, God, you did it. Thank you. So when we come upon those who are spiritually sick and down, it's just bring them a word. You don't have to, all too often I think about, think, 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 overthink things, and, and uh, you don't have to, because they'll just have the word. He says not to worry about what to say. So don't worry about what to say, just go do. And then if you have to say a word, He'll bring the word out of you. If not, then you just give him a hug and go on. <laughs> so, and then we uh, we react differently when we are hungry. And there's a verse in a situation when someone was hungry, and he kind of gave up his whole inheritance. He was, uh, it was Esau. Hung, <laughs> hungry people do dumb things. In Genesis 25, 29 through 34, Esau trades his right as firstborn son for a bowl of stew. So when you're walking around and you're, you're hungry, go, go uh, pray, go read the word, don't walk around in your in a, in a stupor and do dumb things. We have, we have to continually be aware of feeling that thirst and that hunger inside of us. Yeah, I can I can get going and I can uh, we sometimes forget about what God wants to do and, and uh, I'm I'm hungry for His Word. I'm hungry for Him, but I kind of just get in a routine of life and and don't really go looking, seeking after him and then wondering why why is nothing really going on around me? Well it's not him, it's it's me. He's always there, he's always present, he's always wanting to do something. It's are you the one waking up? Are you the one uh well, first thing you wake up, are you having his pray are you praising him in the morning when you wake up? Are you Reading your word when you wake up. Are you praying? Are you are you diligently seeking after him? And if you're not, you're going to trade something that could be good for just a bowl of stew. That that just stays. It, and it's in, and then it's just out. A couple hours. It doesn't stay around like his word stays around. Whatever you chew on, whatever you take on of his word sustains and it stays it's true and uh, we should be hungering and thirsting after God when we passionately seek and live for him we are filled the aroma that we carry from this filling is causing others to be hungry for God we need to be praying for the Lord to help us recognize when we are spiritually hungry and when others are hungry that we may partake of his meal. He said a meal he has set um, before us a table and he wants us to come and dine with him. He's uh, he's just waiting for us. I think of a, oh, a uh, black tie at an event, a banquet and big old meal and everybody's dressed up and all this, and he just wants us to come and join in that meal. And uh, if you came in in the wrong attire, it doesn't matter. He'll come and he'll dress you in the right attire. He'll show you where the setting needs to be on the on the table, where this fork needs to go, that one needs to go. I mean, it's the whole meal. There's an order to some of these meals. You don't use the wrong fork, and don't use the. <laughs> You know, everybody looks and like, what are you doing? But not the Lord. He doesn't do that. He'll just come beside and be like, teach and train you the right way of how to do things. And uh, but we just need to stay 
hungry for him. We need to recognize when others are hungry and to uh, help them out and uh, help them be full. He wants us to be overflowing. Yeah, well, there's, that's, that's pretty much about all I have. <laughs> there is, I guess, since this kind of is a is a teaching, I do have a little bit of a homework. If anybody wants wants anything, there's several uh, several verses. Oh, I I could show this, I guess. So well, I'm going to turn. I'm going to change something. I'm going to show this first verse. Hebrews 5, 13, and 14. Thirteen. Hebrews 5, 13. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquired, uh, acquainted with the teaching and righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who by con- constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So when you're on a, this was another, um, the Lord led me to this, it was, Liquid and solid foods affect your appetite in different ways. If you consume a lot of liquid foods such as smoothies, meal replacements, shakes, and soups, you may be hungrier than, more often than you would be if you would eat more of a solid food. So, if you... A lot of times I'll wake up and I might just click on my little Bible app and read the one little verse of a day. Well, that's not really a solid food. That's just a quick little, oh, cool, I, I check it off. I read, I read my Bible. I read a deal. So that, that's just a liquid. It's just a liquid food that's not sustaining. And uh, it's just we, we've got to continue to, to um, study, to read. And, and one, ma- one major reason for this is that liquid food passes through your stomach more quickly than solid foods do. So that's where if you're eating a solid food, you gotta take a while to digest it. It takes a little while when you're reading some of this to to pray and really understand what this is saying in order to um, fully be equipped to do a good work. And so when we're just glimpsing over and, and reading a little verse and not praying about it and letting it digest into our system, we can quickly Forget it. Yes, he can bring it to remembrance, but we can. It'll. It won't. It won't stick like he wants it to stay. Uh, furthermore, more studies suggest that liquid foods do not have as great of an impact on the suppression of hunger promoting hormones compared um, with solid foods. Eating liquid foods also tends to make less time than eating solid, also takes less time than eating solid foods. This may lead you to want to eat more only because your brain hasn't had enough time to process fullness signals. So, uh, so you're, 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 it's wanting more of it. You're, you're longing to want more. So if you're just, uh, on a little bit of that, the milk or whatever, and you're not fully eating that the meal, then it's it's um, it's not satisfying you. It's hitting a little quick deal in your in your mind and your spirit, but it's it's not it's not staying. It's not settling in. In one in uh, one study, people who consume a liquid snack reported less fullness and more feeling of hunger than those who consumed a solid snack. <laughs> they also consume uh, 400 more calories throughout the day than a solid snack group. 
so that you can you, you can consume lots of things besides just uh, the word. You can I can scroll through YouTube and hit little videos and inspirational things and a motivation for your day. But it's not a solid food. It's just a, a liquid food that's just going to pass through, and it's not truth either. It's just something somebody, it, it leans on truth, but it's not the full truth. I mean, Satan knows the word, and he twists it and turns it. And so we've got to know the actual truth and use it against him. So... Thank you for this opportunity and this time, and, and I'm just thankful to stand behind this clear, transparent podium. <laughs> it's quite a deal. It's, I always look at his, his Pastor Tim's podium, and it's clear there's no there's no hiding of anything, <laughs> and that's that's how he is. He is man and lets everybody know what's going on and, and uh, I'm thankful for that and love and prayers and, and Sister Betty as she always just says love you brother to me and it's like here we are we're all brothers and sisters in Christ and so thank you Shane you know that when you're talking about how we need to have something to give to somebody else too. I have family members that aren't necessarily walking real close with the Lord, but when they have a crisis come up, it's like, Pam, can you pray? Can you, can you help? And yeah, it's not just for us, but it's for the others that are around us as well. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Yep, that's right. And how we walk with... I love that. I love the way you said the way we walk with the Lord should make other people hungry for Him. Good job. I'm proud of you. He did a good job, didn't you guys? Yeah. And hey, let's go ahead and pray for do you mind if we pray for Pastor Tim real quick? Let's do it. Okay. Yes. Father, we, we lift up Pastor Tim to you and we ask that you help him to get the rest that his body needs so that he can go on and finish his race, Lord. We know he's got a He's still got so much more to do. And so, Lord, we're asking that there would be a quick healing in his body, but that you would also help him to rest the way that he needs to. And, Lord, we lift up Sister Betty. We thank you that you give her an abundance of grace. Lord, what a precious, precious mother of the faith that we have here. And we ask, Lord, that you would just strengthen her by your spirit in her inner man. Lord, we're just going to worship you now for a while. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. your heart in the streams of life let the pain and the sorrow be washed away by the waves of his mercy as deep cries out to
thirsty and all who are thirsty all who are we come to the fountain and dip your heart in the streams of life let the pain and the sorrow By the waves of his mercy, his deep cries out to deep. We're singing, Come, Lord Jesus, come. We're singing. Oh. 
Holy Spirit, for those of us and even Father and myself included, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for stirring that hunger inside of us. Father, we repent. We've been filling up on things in this world, filling up on temporary, short-lived things. And we choose now the good thing, Lord. We turn from those things and we choose the good thing. We make a decision tonight, Lord, we're gonna choose the good thing. Holy Spirit, our entire life, when we leave here, when we go to bed, when we get up, go to work, every moment is a moment of worship. We're to do everything as unto you. So Holy Spirit, you are invited. We open the door to everyday living. We open the door into our routines, God. We say, Holy Spirit, come and interrupt them. Come and speak to us in the moments of our routine, our day to day, and make them holy times of encounter with you. Even the most mundane tasks, God, can be an encounter with you. So take our life, God. Take our worship Monday through Sunday, God. Let our whole life be a fragrance of worship. Everything we do, God. Everything, Jesus.
us, Lord. Oh, it's Holy Spirit tonight. That's Holy Spirit tonight. Unlocking what's in you so you can just let Him be Him. We don't have to make anything happen. We just have to do what He says. We don't have to make anything happen. Just be obedient to what you hear Him say. And then let Him do, let Him move, and your joy will be full. Even in rejection, your joy will be full. And you'll walk away fulfilled and full of joy in Jesus. Because His presence is going to flood you. It's going to flood you. It's going to flood you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
darkness and turn it to glory and turn it into strength oh watch me take your weakness watch me take your frailty and strengthen and bring glory in this place oh don't be afraid of weakness just glory in your weakness and bring me your strength i'll make it my strength watch me take it watch me take it it's not a reason to sit back it's not a reason to stay back no 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 watch me take it and watch this thing that i will do in you watch this thing that i will do in you even in your weakness stop looking at your own strength look to me i'm the strength of your arms i'm the strength of your person forever Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I heard that very strongly. Watch what I will do. Watch what I will do with your weakness. It's not a reason to step back anymore. This is to me too. It's not a reason to have an excuse anymore. It's not a reason. Your weakness, your inabilities will become His glory. They'll become His glory. As our brother said tonight, to not focus, focus, focus on what I'll say, what I'll do. Let the Holy Spirit move through you. Positioning is everything. Put yourself in that place and then let him do it. Oh, he loves even weak obedience. He loves it. You've opened the door and he just just goes right in there. He wants to show you that he's faithful. He wants to show me that he's faithful. What freedom we're gonna experience when we unlock that, when we get that, when we're no longer afraid. For me, speaking in front of people is terrifying. <laughs> I can do this all day long, but to do what you did tonight, wow. <laughs> I'll probably be up there in a week or two. <laughs> but it's such an encouraging word from the Lord. Just give me a weakness. Because that's when I shine. That's when he can shine. Oh, the glory to the Lord. All the glory to the Lord, Jesus. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. No, there is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Sing for 
Father, we love you. Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth.
that my life and our lives would be a pleasing sacrifice. That it would be a fragrance unto you that you love Jesus. That you love to come and just dwell with us and stay with us. That this house, Lord, the presence would never lift God. We pray, God, for heavier weight of glory. Prepare us for heavier weight of glory. Prepare us for the heavier weight of glory. Teach us to honor the presence of the Lord in this place like we've never done before, Jesus. Holy Spirit, show us what the Father loves. Father, Holy Spirit, Jesus, we want to dine with you. You have that invitation to us. That he who loves me, my Father and I will come in. We'll sit down and we'll dine with them. We want to experience that. We want to encounter that. We say yes to the invitation. We're coming to the table, Jesus. Feed us at the table. Feed us your word. Open up your word to us. You who are worthy to open the scroll, open your word to us as you did to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, how you open the word and open their eyes. As we read the word, may we find you in it, Jesus. We want to have revelation of your word. Holy Spirit, show us everywhere in there where Jesus is. Every type and every shadow every promise fulfilled. In the volume of the book, he said, it is written of me. Oh, we want to read the word in a whole new way. Because we want to have revelation of Jesus every time we open it. In Jesus' mighty name. scripture it says in my weakness in in our weakness he is made strong yes yeah our i don't know i've got we so getting up and speaking in front of people not a big deal for me doing what you do singing yeah that's that's terrifying to me can we wow anyway god is so good so I just, you know, Shane, that was such a good word that you brought. We've got to be hungry, and we, but we can't fill up on. It's like Twinkies, you know. That's like you're you're saying, you know, like you got your, well, you know, your little Bible verse, and it's like, okay, well, I popped a Twinkie now. I'm not quite so hungry, but it's not nourishing. It doesn't satisfy. It's not until you get into the meat of the word, and 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 spending time with him because it's about that relationship that we have with him and it, I know that the more I pray and the more time I spend in prayer and in studying the word the hungrier it makes me for it it's addictive it's a good addiction you know but if I get lazy and I just like you know do my little devotion and then I'm off and do in and say but lord i don't really have time to pray this time or you know and then after a while you get weak and it, it was just such a good it's just such a good analogy so um let's just go ahead and pray real quick father i, I ask that you would give us an even greater hunger for you Lord, we, we want to be hungrier for you. We want to be like the hungriest people. Yes, 
so hungry for you, hungry for, for the Holy Spirit, holy, uh, the, just a hunger to see what you desire. I ask, Lord, that you would transform us into people who are full of joy, and yet we hunger and we thirst for our God. We, we hunger and we thirst after that righteousness. And Lord, oh, may it be said of the people of this place that we pursue, we are pursuing our God because there's nothing that satisfies like you do. Nothing satisfies like you. I thank you for holy hunger a holy hunger father i pray that that would sweep across this congregation but also all across our region that there would be a holy hunger for you because we know lord that you respond you will respond to our hunger and when we're hungry for you you fill us oh and it's so good you are so good and lord we will step out we will step out even into those places where we're terrified and just let you be what you are, Holy Ghost. Just let you do what you want to do. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does anybody here need prayer? Or anything this evening? Or You'll take prayer? Hey, yeah. Come on down. <laughs> I need to put the. Is it private or can we? Okay. She's having issues with her golf. This has been going on for a long time, hasn't it? It is time for this to stop, isn't it? Rhonda and Denise, you wanna come down? Oh, and Colby, you too. Why don't you come on down and help me pray for this lady because you need to be healed. That's just all there is to it. Yes. And I, oh, and, and mom-in-law, can she come? Your mother-in-law? Or would she feel comfortable? Catherine, Catherine would you like to come and? Come and pray too. Yeah. 